Hello everybody, it's Shockerman to 1000 million pony for juicy. Welcoming you back to an episode of Pikmin for the Nintendo Switch. Which could also be played on GameCube and also Nintendo Wii, but we're gonna follow up with the Switch version, okay? Last time we started off the journey in the impact site, finding the engine for the SS Dolphin. There is another ship pod we found in this area, but we're not gonna be able to obtain it for a long, long time. Today we are going to be making it to the Forest of Hope. And this music is actually really nice to listen to. I'm not going to like let it play in the background, but if you want to listen to it in your own time, just research the name of this place on YouTube and just listen to it on there. My dolphin has returned to the surface along with the Pikmin's onion. Being alone on this strange planet makes me somewhat uneasy. So I shall call the Pikmin out of the onion. All I need to do is stand in the light beneath the onion and press A. So we're going to call everybody out. And instantly, you got this. Grass. Trust me, it's more interesting than you think. They will drop nectar. Upon doing that, another intriguing discovery. A local variety of grass produces a sort of yellow nectar. When the Pikmin drink this delicacy, they instantly mature into flowers. This apparent Pikmin favorite cyst, uh, seems to be full of nutrition. Closer observation is needed to determine the strengths of the, and peculiarities of these flower Pikmin. There is actually one problem with the nectar in Pikmin 1. One batch of nectar can be drunk by one Pikmin. And when one Pikmin actually drinks it, the whole thing is gone, just like that. You want to basically try your hardest to make sure that as you get as many Pikmin on that batch of nectar as you can. Because it will not do you any justice if you just decide, oh, I'm going to throw one Pikmin there to drink the whole thing. So, first thing you're actually going to be doing is you're going to have the Pikmin destroy this wall. And while they're doing that, I'm going to push... Uh, Myself actually pull these guys out, but if you push the minus button, you'll load the pause button. If you actually go straight to sunset, which honestly you'd be questioning yourself, why would you do that? You can go to the previous say, so you can start the day over again. But more importantly, if you push plus, it's just a black screen. But this will have a purpose in due time. Over there, you can see a, one of our first enemies, known as the Bulborb. Those are the standard enemies that you're going to be encountering throughout the whole majority of this game. Uh, they, can, they are actually pretty weak. They can die instantly by throwing a Pikmin directly on top of their back. However, if you're not good with your aim, you can do an alternative. You can charge directly at them. However, it is a little bit risky to do that because sometimes the Pikmin tend to like run around the enemy, not into them. So it is definitely beneficial for you to throw the Pikmin onto the small enemies and then rush on the bigger ones. So like this one here, Yeah. Uh, oh. Did he? Ah, uh, yeah, he ate some Pikmin. So, yeah, if you actually don't want to lose Pikmin, just do the following. 
If you think a Pikmin is going to get et, uh, try to stun him as best as you can. But if you're worried that an enemy is about to do an attack, whistle the Pikmin towards you and run away from the enemy. Because otherwise you will have no chance of keeping them alive. That's the hardest realization that you have to come to. Here's one of the ship parts. There's going to be like a text dialogue for every single ship part you find. Why is the Eternal Fuel Dynamo? It has an unlimited energy supply. I won't have to worry about saving electricity anymore. This will make my flight for survival a bit easier. Now, in the previous episode of End of Day 1, Olimar actually gave a statement that he wanted to get every one of, pick of his ship parts. That is what is the definition of 100% completing the game is. However, you do not need to get all 30 ship parts by the end of the game. Um, you need to get at least 25. There are 5 ship parts that are not counted to be really important. And you will be told exactly what 5 ship parts are not important to pick up at the end of the game. I'm not going to bother mentioning them right now because spoilers. Plus, I do not even remember the top of my head. So, it's just a weight of suspense. Um, yeah, I knew that I was going to wake him up. Okay. Oh, uh, he got another one. Now, pick me. Why are you picking up the. Oh, God. This is the definition of Pikmin being stupid. And you notice that I'm actually taking damage. Um, I, oh, I best, I actually best restart the day. Yeah, continue from previous save. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've last played this game. But honestly, um, we do have to like go through the whole text dialogue once again and the uh, other stuff. But basically. This is what the whole definition about saving the Pikmin. They are incredibly stupid. You tell them to do something and they actually oftentimes don't do it. So that's basically why you need to like babysit them. Just get through that. <laughs> All right, I don't think I was actually gonna like bonk some sense into that Pikmin because I just threw him by the onion. So you obviously noted that there's a pellet pose that's actually colored yellow there, um, which means. There's definitely going to be a case where you're going to be picking up more than one color Pikmin. So, yeah, um, so I actually will want to say this as ahead of time, like, we actually will say. When I say that the Pikmin are stupid, I do literally mean that they are stupid. The time that you see at the top of the screen, uh, you will be notified how close you are to the end of the day. Each day basically goes on for an equivalent of 15 minutes max. But um, you can end it early if you feel like that there's nothing else that you feel like you need to, need to or are fully capable of doing. 
And noticing the pattern on the floor here, you can see that you've got this spiral look where the red onion is above, and yet there were three of them. Which obviously indicates that we're going to be dealing with three lots of Pikmin, to say the least. And we can see one of them instantly is going to be yellow. So we'll keep a heads up on that. Now, if a Pikmin was actually to get picked up by an enemy, you can theoretically save them for minutes before they get et. Because they do have like an eating animation. Uh, this over here, these are bomb rocks. And... Um, it's not really ideal for me to go into detail about them now. But... At the same time, it kind of is, if you get my drift. We're going to leave those uh, red Pikmin there to neutralize a little bit. So... Right, just whistle them all. Uh... Guys! Respond to the whistle! Jeez! It's like you need your heads banging together or something! Right. Uh, these guys over here, they are known as wog poles. Uh, they can't do anything. They basically just run away from from any danger. You can just instantly chase after them and punch them if you feel like you want something to do. However, it is kind of hard to hit them, to be fair. Plus, they never go out of the water. And there's a little bit of a tutorial about certain stuff in this game that you actually will base around in due time. Like, um... So like I say, tutorials do not happen unless you automatically discover them ahead of time. So incidentally, if I was to just purposely throw... So let's see. Uh, no. So I'm going to take one Pikmin to demonstrate this. He's gone in the water. And you can see he was actually about to drown. When that happens, you want to whistle the Pikmin instantly, otherwise he's instantly dead. Because apparently, Pikmin can actually drown to death for some silly reason. So, kind of stupid. But then again, they are small creatures, so it's understandable really. And we obviously see there's a blue pellet posy here. No, Pikmin, stop picking stuff up! Oh my god. Instantly, I can just tell that I've lost so many Pikmin in an instant. There. Right, let's activate this, because this is the real reason we're actually going down here. I'm not even going to bother resetting the day again. I'm just going to let those Pikmin die for all I care, because that is just downright sh
stupid. So, here's our next Pikmin. The colour is different, but it seems to be a Pikmin nonetheless. First glance suggests this one has what it, in some circles could be considered very large ears. Basically looking like similar ears that you see with Link and Zelda from, the, from Hyrule. <laughs> it looks like it may weigh less than the others. In what other ways might it be different from the red Pikmin? I must be sure to observe it closely. I can hold the Pikmin for a moment with A, then swap it for another by pressing R. I'm just going to throw that yellow Pikmin there, while I'm going to be dealing with those idiots who just let themselves get killed. That clock has indicated the coming of noon. From now on I must pay close attention to the sun meter on my monitor and choose my actions accordingly. So it is best for me to review my monitor's data. Across the top of my monitor are the sun meter and day display. At the bottom of my spacesuit damage meter and Pikmin gauges from the left. These numbers reflect Pikmin under my command, Pikmin in the field and total Pikmin including those in onion. To adjust my monitor I can move the right stick to rotate the camera but yeah 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 okay we get the gist, we get the gist, thank you. Guys, guys, pick up a pellet posy and just be done with it. Honestly, sometimes I just wonder what the bloody hell is wrong with all of these guys because seriously. Because I can instantly tell a lot of Pikmin are going to die in this. And why the heck did this yellow Pikmin decide to not just... Hello? Listen to the whistle please, you have ears! Okay. Right, um... I'm gonna have one big ball bulb go directly to the reds to make up for all of the Pikmin that I lost. Still a little bit annoyed about that, honestly. But to actually go into more detail about the yellow Pikmin as a whole, yellow Pikmin are actually known to be high flyers. They do weigh less than the red Pikmin, so more than likely they will travel higher than the standard Pikmin that you know of. They, they do also have another benefit. They are the only Pikmin in this game that can pick up these bomb rocks. The yellow Pikmin have picked up some peculiar stones. Why did they decide to grab them? This action seems to be the um, instinctive to the yellow Pikmin. But just what are these strange glowing stones? Brightly glowing cracks cover them. Perhaps these cracks indicate that there's tremendous power locked away within. This merits further research. Okay, so first and foremost, throw only one of these at a time. Because that bomb rock can actually kill a ton of Pikmin if you are not careful with them. The glowing rocks of the yellow Pikmin picked up would be explosive stones. So yeah, uh, I'm not going to be like going into too much detail about this. So you can pause the video right now and read all of that if you wish.
And in case you're wondering, you will actually get that. <laughs> Okay, so that's actually one thing. You can choose to have a Pikmin, like, throw it, if you so wish. Okay, there we go. We'll grab a barrage of bomb rocks. So when you're throwing these yellow Pikmin, know that they do have a high arch. So aim close to the wall, but not directly at the wall. If you want to save your yellow Pikmin from being blown up, because literally, and this actually can happen. It's very rare, but it does happen. The yellow Pikmin not just them specifically, but because they're the only ones that carry the bomb rocks, it's understandable that it will be them. There's a rare chance that these Pikmin can trip. When they trip, that indicates the following concept of, oh, they are at risk of being killed and there's nothing you can do to save them because they are still technically following you, they're not going dim in colour. So even if you do whistle them, chances are they're not going to survive. Uh, why the heck? I have no idea why Olimar decided to actually like run around in a whole circle to pick up all of those Pikmin, but whatever. Right, there's a five Peliposi there, so we'll make the red Pikmin pick that up. Uh, I think we've gone. Oh, we got. We got at least a couple. Right. There is a ship part over there, but there's nothing we can do about that just yet, so we're just going to have to ignore that for the time being. Uh, we are getting a little bit close to the end of the day. A clock is indicating the approach of sunset. Pikmin waiting beneath the dolphin and onions will probably enter the onions on their own. But if I don't call the stragglers and add them to my group, they may not be able to get back. I am sure that the Pikmin still planted are safe, but I am somewhat concerned about leaving Pikmin to fend for themselves in the darkness. That's something to keep a note of. I'm not going to do anything over there because why would I actually fight big enemies like that at this close time period? Good, good. Right, we didn't actually pick up any ship pass, but that is fine. Sometimes it's definitely safer to actually uh, farm your Pikmin first before going into an entourage of the big tasks. But whatever you do, when it's like close to the sunset, don't, like, see right there, you saw a red Pikmin trip right there. Do not leave a Pikmin far behind. When it's just like, if you run too far ahead and they trail behind, 
They could trip, which would then count for them leaving the group, which would then result in them getting et when it's like very close to the end of the day. You have to be careful of that. Because otherwise you will see a cousin of a Pikmin running away from these enemies and they will eat them in the middle of the night. It appears that many of my ship parts have landed on this region. If I can just recover the parts of my radar, I should be able to use my radar screen. That's the uh, pause map menu I told you about. How that would improve my chances? It would definitely be the case. Right. Then I'd only have to press plus to locate my parts. Yet, there seems to be many hostile life forms here. If I am attacked and my spacesuit takes damage, I must return to my ship. Stand in front of it and press A to make suit repairs. As I explore, I must pay attention to my suit's damage meter at the bottom left corner of the screen. Look at Immediately, we lost 14 red Pikmin at the start of the day. <sighs> Absolute stupidity, honestly. But, next episode, we're going back to the Forest of Hope. And this time, we actually are going to be grabbing um, ship parts. Even though we actually showed we had 100 Pikmin in the overworld, we only have 9 yellows and 54 reds. Because the planted Pikmin will still stay planted when we left and we can come back and pick them up at the start of the next day. Okay? See you guys then.